Hi, I'm Julie, keeper of my home. Welcome back. This is week three of our pantry challenge. And if you're new to my channel, Three Rivers Homestead has started a pantry challenge and I've hopped on board for the months of January and February. So this means that I'm going to be shopping our pantry, our home, our larder, our freezer, whatever we have here at home is what we are going to, to eat. Um, we're not going to be store shopping for anything. And I've actually chosen not to short store shop for anything, any of our cleaners or anything else. Um, medicine is the only thing that we will get. So, and I think we're pretty, we're doing pretty good. There isn't anything really that we need because I can make all of those things for the most part. Now we have run out of a couple of things. We've run out of my husband's coffee creamer and some American sliced cheese. I'm not really worried about the cheese because we're really not huge cheese eaters. What we had for cheese was very few slices in, um, left in the package, so it's not a deal breaker. I have nutritional yeast. We use that more than anything anyway. Uh, the coffee creamer though might be a problem. I can make it. But my husband really likes the store-bought one. So I don't know if I can push him through or not. <laughs> He's been talking about it a lot in the last couple of days. So I know it's really in the front of his mind. So we'll see how uh, we do with that. I'll let you know. But we're going to get into this. I have the meals, some of which I've... Um, I'm going to have to voice over some of which are I'm just going to explain uh, as I go. I'm also doing it kind of the same as I did last week. You guys really liked how I gave a lot of the recipes and things. I'm not sure that I did a lot of stuff this week, but I did do some cooking with our four-year-old granddaughter. So we baked some bread and that's going to be worth watching. So. Stay tuned for that. You'll want to see that anyway. Let's get into this video. We'll get started and see how we did this week and you can let me know what you think. Sunday morning, January 16. A pumpkin muffin and a cup of tea. Elderberry and lemon. Great for this cold day because it is negative six degrees right now. For dinner tonight, we are having some ribeye steaks. Not something we typically do, but these were in the freezer. We buy meat once in a while when it's really marked down, and this was heavily marked down, so we picked it up. And we're going to fry some potatoes. Now, my husband loves pan-fried potatoes because he loves the crispiness of them. So he cooked both in cast iron pans. He just salt and peppered these steaks, put them in the pan, browned them on each side. And the potatoes, he just put some butter mixed with some olive oil in the pan. He sliced those up raw and he's just letting those fry. We put the, the foil over them because they were spattering so much. So until they kind of got going, um, I left that on there. Now we're also having some green beans from the pantry and I'm loving that tool to open up my jars. <laughs> so for the potatoes, he just added some salt and pepper. He didn't really do too much in the way of seasoning them because you really don't have to do a whole lot. They are so delicious on their own and I'm not even a potato eater. I'm not really big on potatoes at all. Although I have eaten a lot of potatoes on this challenge. Now the steaks, like I said, he is just browning those up on each side. He's adding some onions and he's just going to let those cook up with the steaks. I love cooked onions. I am not a fan of raw onions, but I love cooked onions. They're delicious. So he's just going to add a little bit more salt and pepper and just season those really well. You know, you don't need a lot of seasoning with this. Salt and pepper is perfectly fine. You can see how good it looks. Oh my gosh. Now, when we plated this, I also added some sauerkraut in a little dish on the side. It was so good. 
We had the steak, the onions, the pan fried potatoes, green beans, sauerkraut, and homemade brown bread. Now we're ready for a little Madeline time. If you've been with me for a while, you know Madeline. She's our four-year-old granddaughter and she is a spitfire. Madeline and I were in the pantry and she really wanted to make some banana bread. That's all she talked about all morning, so I said, okay. She was here for the day. We were having a pajama day. That's what she chose. And she wanted to make banana bread, so we said, okay, we'll make banana bread. And she completely took over. I kind of rode with her <laughs> on all of this because the minute I took the camera out to film this, she got right into YouTuber mode. This kid knew just what to do and just what to say immediately. So you watch and see how she does. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of her. Okay, we have on a great day and we're baking banana bread and our PJs. We're having a PJ day. And see, we have everything to bake. So let's get started. See, we have everything and we are going to have much more stuff. And here are the ingredients and we're having fun. It's a great time together. Can you put it up, you mix, so I can show them the bananas? You put them in and they'll see them. Look who we're having the bananas. Look, look at them. Aren't they great? Okay. They look great. Let's mush it. does that make? Four. <laughs> Six. <laughs> how many make? How about two? Two. Okay, and how many does this one make? Eight. Half. Half. Two and a half. Two and a half it makes. How old are you? Four. All right. What does it taste like? Oh, flour is not, not very good. Hey, it feels fluffy. It feels fluffy. <laughs> it is comfortable. You want to okay. feel it? Feel it. Okay. Feel it, Mimi. Feel it. Come on, do it. Does it feel yep. soft? We're going to go like this. Wait. There you go. And we're, what's that? It's baking powder. We'll put baking powder in the bowl. And? And what is it? Baking soda. And baking soda. Good job. We're the best helpers, aren't we, Mimi? That's right. And we're the best cookers and best helpers. That's right. And I helped. One day I helped Mimi. I didn't help her, but I let her water our garden. And you had yummy, yummy snacks and treats. Carrots. But. Besides, I don't like something that's gross, that's red, that doesn't, it's not an apple. Tomatoes, I don't like tomatoes. Don't make me eat tomatoes. <laughs> we are making sour milk. Yes, because we, we are. Because that's what we need for this recipe. Sure we do. But I don't want to, I don't want to drink it. No, we're not going to drink it. We're going to put it in the recipe. Not yet. I'll tell you when. I'm not ready for it yet. And see, it looks milk, but you can't drink it. Monsters aren't real. I had the goodest dream last night. Could you ever do that? I had a great dream. No, you ready? I not yet. Not that. We're ready to do this. And we're ready to do stirring with this. 
looks good, but it's not ready yet. Mm. It looks so yummy. Can I smell it? Stop for one minute. It smells good. Okay, you ready for the ready for the butter? <laughs> for the sour milk. Ready to mix it? Sure, we are ready to mix it. It'll be a little loud. All the subscribers are watching this. And we are making everything, but do okay. you like Minnie Mouse like me? I like Minnie Mouse. Okay, so here's a question. Do we want to put blueberries in our banana bread or no? It tastes delicious. Okay. We are putting blueberries in. It'll taste yummy when you eat it. Okay, just dump it in. Mm, that looks good, doesn't it? I can't wait to eat one. <laughs> Me, I was sneaking on you. How are you doing? Good. It's just a little hard for my it's two hands. It's about the that. It's about to get on the floor. Just do the best that you can. That's gross. Don't, and remember, don't eat that. That's not ice cream. I'm gonna in, get in the this pan. in the pan. Okay. okay. Wow, looks delicious. I think it's gonna be, don't you? Mm-hmm. Cool. We're gonna put sugar on the top, aren't we? Because that yeah. just makes the top crack really nice and it tastes delicious. I almost forgot to show you the bread, but here it is. The bread is good. <laughs> While Madeline and I were busy in the kitchen, Madeline's sister Riley was busy in the pantry. She wanted to do a little cooking too. What are you making? Cupcakes. What are you making? Cupcakes. Cupcakes? What kind of cupcakes? Confetti. Confetti. Good job. Yeah. Let's get them in the oven. Mm -hmm. Says 19 to 23 minutes. Well, that's a girl with a lot of personality. <laughs> Both girls love to cook and bake when they come here, and I don't mind. I want them to always have some really great memories of coming to visit here, and I hope they carry them for the rest of their life. I know that I still carry fond memories of cooking and baking with my grandmother when I was little. Now let's continue on with the pantry meals. Now, we're at Monday, January 17, and I don't have a lot of footage for this day because we did have the girls. It was an extremely busy day, so I didn't document a lot. But I can tell you the girls chose to have muffins for breakfast on that morning with some homemade cranberry apple juice and some. I had some tea. I'm a big tea drinker in case you haven't noticed that already. I'm allergic to caffeine, so it's never got caffeine in it, but I love herbal tea. So that was breakfast for that morning, and that evening we had pizza. I do have a picture of the pizza. We just made homemade uh, pizza dough and threw on whatever it was we had. We made some homemade pizza sauce because we didn't have any. Should have recorded that one. Uh, and part of the pizza had some homemade pesto on it. Tuesday, January 18, oatmeal with walnuts, craisins, cinnamon, brown sugar, and we also have some toast, some homemade jams, and some maple syrup. I am not sure where the file footage went for that uh, for dinner that evening on the 18th, but we did have chicken, potatoes, and a vegetable. 
So nothing fancy. So let's move on to the next day. Breakfast this morning on Wednesday, January 19. Apple slices and the much requested breakfast sandwich. It's eggs, cheese, and bacon. Because today we have company for breakfast. Want to say hi, Madeline? Hi. So for dinner tonight, Wednesday, January 19. Uh, dinner tonight, I'm going to do something a little bit different because I have some leftovers. You can see here. This is a pan of some steak, onions, a little bit of green beans, some fried potatoes. Not really enough potatoes, not really enough vegetables. So I found a can of potatoes under our counter. We don't keep a lot of foods like this on hand, but we did have this. So I don't know how long it's been there, but it needs to be used. Um, it says it expired last month. So I'm going to fry those up and make some type of pot pie or casserole or something with them. To start, I'm going to chop up all the leftover steak, uh, the onions, the potatoes, all of that was in that bowl of leftovers. Then I'm going to start a roux. I'm just doing this by melting butter, adding some flour. I'm just going to stir the flour around and cook it for four or five minutes because you really want to cook the flour taste out of it. You don't want to have that tasting of flour. So the longer you cook it, the better it is. You just want to watch it so it doesn't burn. Now I'm adding my bone broth. Remember the beef bone broth I made for the first time? Well, I'm getting a chance to use it for the first time. Now I'm going to whisk all the lumps out of it, let it sit, simmer, and thicken. And oh my goodness, if you could smell this, it is amazing. And homemade bone broth, way better than store-bought. The tastes, they aren't even comparable. Now to my thickened sauce, I am going to add some garlic powder, just a few shakes. And I'm also going to add onion powder. And again, just a few shakes. You really want this just to taste. I'm also going to add some salt and pepper, again, just to taste, and stir that all in. Oh my gosh, it, I mean, I really can't tell you how this was, the smells, the aromas, it was just a different smell than regular bone broth. It, it just had a different smell to it, a deeper, more savory scent to it. Now I'm adding the chopped up steak, the chopped up potatoes, all the stuff that was in that dish of leftovers. And along with that, I'm also going to add the potatoes that we cooked on the stovetop, the extra potatoes, the canned, they're all brown nicely. And I'm adding in the leftover green beans and I'm adding some more green beans. I drained a pint of green beans and I added those to it. We have lots of green beans in our larder from last year's garden. So it's really nice to use all of this in together. Oh gosh, just look at that. I can't even tell you how delicious this dish was. For the top of this little casserole pot pie type dish, I am going to add biscuits. These are really simple buttermilk biscuits and the ingredients are one stick of butter, frozen butter grated with a box grater. Then you're going to need some flour, self-rising flour. You want two and a half cups. Now, if you don't have self-rising flour, which I never do, you can make it. For making your own self-rising flour, you want one cup of flour, just regular all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. That's it. That's all it is. This recipe makes enough for one cup of self-rising flour. So if you need more, you'll just need to adjust that recipe. To the flour and the butter, I am adding one cup of buttermilk plus two tablespoons. I'm going to lightly mix that around. You never want to mix it too much because then it forms a really stiff dough and that's never good. You want really soft biscuits. So once I get that all mixed in, I'm going to roll it out onto a floured board to about a half an inch thick and I'm just going to cut some biscuits out of it. I placed all of my biscuits on my pot pie casserole dish and I'm going to get it ready to put in the oven. Now you can brush these with like milk 
or egg wash, whatever you want to brush it with to, you know, and then place it in the oven. But I didn't. I just put it in the oven, in the cook stove as is. And once it was finished, just look at that. Those biscuits were so good. And the filling, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how delicious this was. We actually had this for leftover lunch for the next two days. It was delicious. I would definitely make this again should I have any leftover steak, for sure. Thursday, January 20, and breakfast is a homemade sourdough English muffin with some homemade jelly. This is blackberry jelly, and I make this with the steam juicer because we don't like seeds. So if you've never used a steam juicer, it's a great way to try and make jelly, and it works It works wonderfully. We love it. It's our new best friend. I'm also having some cranberry pear sauce. This is also homemade, and I have videos on both. I'll either put them in the description box or link them above. Hi guys, it is Thursday, January 20. And we are busy here in the kitchen making, yet again, more apple, pear, and cranberry sauce. We're trying to use up the apples before they go bad. You can see here, he's putting some cranberries in with the apples and pears that he uh, chopped up. And you can see here we have some company. This is our son's dog, Cooper. Cooper likes to come visit. And I am going to use some of the pears. Just pears? Are we going to do just pears or do you want to mix? We're going to do apples and pears and cranberries. Uh, we don't have any more of the large cranberries like he's putting into the applesauce. He's used those. So I went out into the freezer and I did find these. These are some high bush cranberries. So we're going to use those. I'm just going to put those in to the steam juicer. I don't know. I have. This is the steam juicer. I have used this before and done videos on my channel of me using this. So if you want to see how that works, um, I can link one of the videos on here. For supper tonight on Friday, January or Thursday, January 20. Um, got some leftover chicken and I put a little salad dressing in there. Actually, I put a little too much, but. And I'm gonna chop up a gala apple. Add that to it. Just a few little chunks, I'm not measuring, but put those in there. Just get it stirred up and I'll probably add pecans. What do you think? Sounds good. Add some pecans with this and some seasonings. And thank you. Mm -hmm. And we'll put those in uh, a wrap. I've got some wraps that are in our storage refrigerator and you can use those. You could use walnuts in here as well or pumpkin seeds, those would be really good. I chose large flour tortillas to put this filling in, and there's a reason for that, and I'll show you in just a minute. I just split the filling in half, and I'm gonna roll these up. Now there must be some kind of trick to rolling these up the correct way. I don't know if I did it right or not, but this is where I always have trouble, and Joe, he won't roll his up at all because <laughs> there he just can't do it. But I just did the best I could. If there's a trick out there, or if there's a method, let me know. Once I get these all rolled up and tucked in really nicely, well, we're going to fry them. I'm adding a little bit of butter to a cast iron skillet. I'm just gonna let that melt really well and get sizzling hot. And then I'm going to add our sandwiches. I'm just gonna place them folded side down into the pan. And then I'm going to use our bacon press. It's cast iron and it just gives it a good heavy weight 
to hold them down and press them while they're cooking. I'm just going to flip them over here. You can see they're getting golden brown. Oh my gosh. Have you ever cooked your tortillas sandwiches this way? They are so good. Just look at how golden they are and everything is heated up well inside. You can do this with any type of filling. It's really great. I'm serving these with barbecue potato chips, something really simple and quick. Now look at that. This was probably my favorite meal of the week. I thought I'd come back on here and show you. We finished the juice and this is what we got. One quart and five pints. Friday, January 21, pumpkin muffin, some coffee, that's Joe's breakfast. And of course mine is a breakfast sandwich and a cup of tea. For dinner, we had some potatoes, meat, and a vegetable. The vegetables are some mixed greens that my husband fried up and I canned. They're turnip greens, collard greens, country ham, some hot pepper flakes, and ham base. This ham base is something we buy at our local grocery. It adds the perfect flavor to these vegetables. My husband is seasoning the meat with Kinder's. It's a red garlic seasoning, and he is whipping the potatoes, adding a little bit of milk, a little butter, salt, and pepper. Oh, what a swim, swim. I want to make a mess so I can swim and fly and flip and cry. This is moose steak. It was given to us by a friend who harvested it locally in our area. We're just going to pan fry that with some onions and mushrooms. These are just canned mushrooms. Now we're just going to add some gravy. I'm going to let that thicken in there. This meal was delicious. Every meal my husband cooks is really quite delicious. I am very well aware of how blessed I am to have a husband who not just cooks, but he cleans behind himself as well. Saturday, January 22nd, we have a bowl of oatmeal, a nice hot meal today for breakfast because Early this morning, it was 32 below. Got a cup of tea, homemade English muffin, one with blackberry jam and one with cherry jam. Homemade from the summer. The oatmeal has craisins, walnuts, cinnamon, brown sugar, and a little bit of maple syrup. And dinner tonight is butterfly pork loin. Joe had put those into um, some barbecue sauce, like a sweet onion barbecue sauce, and let them marinate today. He's going to uh, brown these up in here. And we also have some canned beets from last year's garden. We're going to do leftover potatoes from last night's dinner. We added some fresh canned pineapple. Last year we got a really great buy on fresh pineapples. They were a dollar a piece so we bought a couple cases and canned them all. And this is the final meal. And of course, I have a cup of tea because it's well below zero again tonight. Because we have a lot of carrots in storage, Joe made another carrot cake for dessert. Now, this is my dinner plate and I turned it upside down because I wanted to show you something my mom used to do with us when we were younger. Every time she made dessert, 
she would always say, flip your plates over, it's time for dessert. This not only got us so excited about having dessert, but it also encouraged us to really finish everything on our plate because we knew we were going to turn it over. If our plate was not empty, we were not allowed to turn it over, which meant we couldn't have dessert. This was just such a fun thing to do. I don't know where she got the idea, but to this day, I really treasure this memory. Well, that's the end of week three. I hope you enjoyed the recipes and uh, got some meal inspiration for the week ahead. Thank you for joining me. I make two new videos every week on simple living, homestead grown, and all things home. And until next time. Mm -hmm.